because we're going to read from the book of John this morning. We are still dealing with our theme, Love Them. When we are going straight into John chapter 14. John chapter 14, it is the fourth book in the New Testament. And we will read from verse 15 straight down to verse 18. You may stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. John 14, 15 to 18 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. I will only pray the Father if you keep my commandments. But you will keep my commandments, Brother Barbas, on the basis that you love me. So if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. Another comforter. He will give you the Paracletos, the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world, the word, word, world in this context speaks of the people that is in hostility with God. It speaks of those people that does not receive him. It speaks of those people that does not uh, receive Jesus as the son of God. And so what Jesus is saying, Deacon Manus, he says the spirit of truth, the paracletos, the other yalper, Holy Spirit cannot be received by those who are in hostility with God. So whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come again. I'll come to you again. Say for your neighbor, love them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, in John chapter 14, or the book of John is written by, they are, there's a debate between who really writes the book of John because some scholars believe it was the elder John. Others believe it's the evangelist John, the, uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And so there's a debate about who writes the book of John. But the, the context of the book is a little bit different because it takes, it makes part of the four gospels of the New Testament. The first three gospels is the synoptic gospels. Then you get the book of John, which is the fourth gospel in the New Testament. But the book reads a little bit different to um, the first three books or the first three gospels because the first three gospels is written on the account of secondary information. In other words, the authors of the first three gospels were not present when Jesus walked the earth. They didn't see, Sister Zanin Kutuvita Sin, they did not see Jesus, they did not walk with Jesus, they did not encounter him physically for himself. When we read Mark, when Matthew, Mark, Luke, we know now that they have interviewed people so that they can get the, the information and so that they can write the first three synoptic gospels. However, the book of John was written by a man who was an eyewitness to the ministry of Jesus and he, he was physically present, he was there, he journeyed with Jesus and so there are still a lot of debate like I said earlier about really who it was but most scholars believe that it was the disciple Jesus loved and it was John the evangelist chapter 14 by itself opens elder Moors where Jesus tells his disciples that they should not be troubled they should not allow their hearts to be troubled it opens when where, where Jesus says uh, I, I, I say Muni, yes, met me. I, I, and so they, they 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 have reason to be troubled uh, um elder um, manas because um uh, uh, Malan, sorry, because now they have journeyed with Jesus for three years. They have walked with him through his ministry three and a half years. He has called them away from what they know. He has called them into relationship with him. And in chapter 13, he tells them that one of you will deny me. He said, no, he, in fact, he says, one of you will betray me. One of you will sell me for 30 pieces of silver. Then he tells them the second thing eaten, he tells them, is that one of you will deny me. The third 
nothing, he tells them that I am about to die. And so they have reason to, to be uh, troubled in their hearts. They have reason to feel as if they are being abandoned. They have reason to feel like they are worried. Why? Because they have given up everything to follow Jesus. They have walked away. Peter has walked away from a business to follow Jesus. Some of the disciples were gamblers and they walked away from that business, from that income to follow Jesus. Net om te wo, dat ek sal die verhaal het by julle vissie. They have walked away from family. They have walked away from, from friends. They have walked away from everything. Because remember, you cannot follow Jesus unless you are willing to walk away from everything. One of the prerequisites to follow Jesus is not only self-denial, but it is denying the things that you love. And so when we speak about these 12 men, we are not merely speaking about men that walked after Jesus, men that just wanted to be there. We are speaking about men that have all the reason in the world to be upset by the news that he's about to die. Let me know that Christ begins to and so if you really, if you've ever lost anything in your life, then you will know what this means to these men. Uh, you, you will know, bless the name of Jesus Christ, why they are troubled. Because they, if, if you've lost anything really valuable, ek praat van julle wat a boyfriend op die school verloor het, ek praat nie van u wat a goeie huis en a goeie kar verloor het, I'm talking about the people that lost things in life that you will never be able to regain. I'm talking about people that knows what it means to lose people and you will never see that person again. And so these men, they were on the brink of feeling the same level of emotional trauma because they are about to lose everything and anyone or everyone that means the world to them. Jesus says to them, don't let your heart be troubled. Because an ifunra receptor. Het hy nou hulle voete gewas, he was their feet, he has built relationship with them, he has built rapport with them, and so Peter is feeling troubled, he is feeling, he's feeling concerned about this matter, to the extent that Peter is saying, that I will die with you. Jesus kijk vir Peter is in die oor, he said, Jesus, I'm a bit with you. He said, brother, die hand sal drie maal kraai. Voort sy met my doodgaan. Hy sê, sy gaan my eers die naai. Voort sy bereid sal wees. Om vir my te sterven. But do you see the extent of the emotional trauma. That they are experiencing. That they are willing to make statements. That is rationally not stable. Hy weet binnen omself. Dat hy sê gewillig om dood te gaan vir iemand anders sê. But because he's traumatized by the news that Jesus is going to leave him, he's making a statement that does not add up to what he's willing to do. And so in John chapter 14, we see Yeshua, he gives them a sense of security when he says to them, don't be troubled, don't be concerned, um, the, uh, the, that even though you cannot go with me where I'm going, I will surely come back for you. I give all the encouragement that you will join me later so you don't need to be concerned. He says, I will come back to get you so that you can go where I am because you know where I am going. Now, Israel, you, you will remember Thomas. Thomas Thomas was the guy that, that didn't have much faith. Thomas was the same guy that said to Jesus when they said, let's go down to, to wake up Lazarus. It was Thomas that said, nee, 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 ons gaan, ons gaan, ons gaan maar saam met hom, want hulle gaat om dood maak en dan gaan ons saam met hom dood. And so Thomas was the guy that later in the text, when Jesus appeared in the 40 days to his disciples, the Bible says he appeared to them. And then Thomas said, I will not believe that he rose lest I am able to put my finger in the, 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 the holes or the, the nails in his hands. Unless I'm able to put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And so in John chapter 14 verse 5, Thomas says a difficult thing. Thomas says, who can owns? And mind you, Jesus, if we don't even know where you are going, how will we know the way? So Jesus is saying now to Thomas in verse 5, he's saying, We, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
I say Thomas as some is at a boggle to my mind that they can frap who shall also be again, but they have for three. Now, why are you troubled, Thomas? If you don't even believe that I am the way, why are you concerned about me dying? He says, he says to Thomas, but I am the way and the truth. Then come Philip. Now I'm a twelve and a little bit. And Philip jumps in in verse eight, and Philip says, "So was the father." You are saying you're going to your father, and I'm going to pray the father. The father will so send you other comforter. Philip is saying, "So was the father." I I I I read the text, and then. I could almost see the frustration in Jesus. Because Jesus is saying to Philip, I say, Philip, what do you say? That means it looks like you did something with Philip. I have now not had conversation with Thomas, Philip. That Thomas is here, where is he? And I have now not had it for Thomas. I say, Thomas, you look like you did something with Philip. Here comes he and he is here. How is he the father, Philip? He has not known him. He has not seen me, Philip. Dan het sy die pa gesien, Philip. If you seen the son, you have seen the father. I say in verse 8, I say, I am with you so long. And you still don't know me, Philip. I say, you are still asking me to show you the father. Ek kan die sense of disappointment sien. Jesus, oh no, Jesus is busy hier met sy laaste speech. Jesus is busy, he's about to die. He's going to die. This is this. He's, our, our, as I can say, it's like it's his last will and testament. He's about to give them the promise of the Father. And they are concerned about things that they should have, be, have confidence in already. They have walked three and a half years with Jesus. And they still don't know who Jesus is. And Jesus concludes and he says to them, believe me. That I am in the Father. And the Father is in me. But then he says an interesting thing in verse 9. He says basically, he says, Philip, if you believe in me, and if you do not want to believe that I and the Father in, uh, are one, gloed en minste die weke wat ek gedoen het, Philip, man. Gloed en minste, sy glo moest nou nie dat I and the Father in one, gloed en minste in die weke wat ek gedoen het. Philip, you have walked with me, you have seen me open the blind eyes. You have seen me make the cripple to walk. You have seen me uh, uh, call Lazarus forth from the grave. You have seen me, Philip. So if you don't believe that I am the Father in one, at least believe in the works that I have done. He says, because if you believe in the works that I have done, Philip, then you will be able to do the same works. You see the problem that we have today, Sister Antoinette, I see, as he confessing it. Because everyone can confess. At as he, as he renouncing it, of announcing it. Because all of us are announcing. When we worship and we, we declare the way maker and the promise keeper and the light in the darkness, that's not the problem. The problem that we have in today is belief. The problem is belief. People know what to say. They even know how to pray. They know when to pray and what not to pray for. The issue that we are struggling with, it is that people don't believe. And it is very easy to believe for the miracle of someone else than what it is to believe for your own miracle. If it was where you prayed for someone else and that person got his or her breakthrough. If it was where you for someone anders and that person was genees geweest. Ek weet jy was al daar, wat jy al in die bresse getreed vir iemand anders, en by die next bid hier, toe getuig die persoon, but then you started praying for yourself. And the moment you started praying for yourself, it seemed and it felt as if there is nothing happening for you. As ek in die rechte huis hoor. It seemed and it felt that you are not getting, ek meen ek het dan vir die sjelle ding gebid vir die sister se kind man. Ek het dan gebid saam met hy sister, dat hy sister se kind tot redding moet kom. Ek het dan gebid vir hy sister se man, that the Lord might redeem her husband. And now you are praying for your own husband, and it seems like the miracle does not come to you. 
It is because many a times we lack in our faith. We are praying to God, God give me big faith. God give me huge faith. God increase my faith. When the request should never be for your faith to be increased, the request should be for your faith to be strengthened. The disciples, prophet Jesus didn't. And so what we have a problem with is because we think the bigger the faith, the bigger the breakthrough. But Jesus said to the disciples, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to tell the mountain to move and it shall be so. So what you don't need is big faith. You need stronger faith so that when you stand in the day of adversity, that your faith will not fail you. That is what Jesus for Peter did say. He says, Peter, the devil has asked to serve you like wheat. He says, Peter, but I have prayed for you, Peter, so that your faith do not fail. Many of us are on the brink of our faith being, our faith failing. Because things are not happening at the pace that they are supposed, or that we expect for things to happen. Many a times we fail God and we fail in our faith because we have set a timeline to our breakthrough. We have set a timeline to our miracle. And if God does not come through and in that time frame, I'm going to orchestrate my own thing. I got self na iemand to gaan. I got self a ding uitweke. Ah, hier kom December maan op. En ek, ek bid die jyre dat niemand van jyre na die bank toe hal op die December maan verkleere en verkoos jyre. Because what happens if you can wait on the Lord, then the Lord will make all things happen at the right time. We must not pray that the Lord increase our faith. Pray that he strengthens your faith. Amen. So that even if it does not come through by the 24th of December, oh, yes. that you will still wait on him. Amen. That even if it doesn't come through by the 31st of December, that you will still wait on him. Amen. That even if it does not come through by the 16th, that they need the Lord God for loan for a potilensi soppy and bottles from Egypt here. That you will stand your ground and you will keep the faith. You will continue to run this race. You will remain faithful to the confession of your faith. Amen. That you do not defile the ordinance of the Lord. And many people come to the house of God and they sing what we have sang this morning. We say that he's the way maker. We say that he's a, he's a healer. But when the doctor gives you a prognosis, the creepy banana, the doper. It's the time that you must stay immovable. In. That's the time that your faith must testify on your behalf. When you get the bad news, strengthen your faith. Jere van hulle nie vir my die werk gee nie, strengthen my faith. Jere van hulle niks geaard in die rekening is nie, strengthen my faith. Jere van hulle die kinders hier wil hoor nie, jere strengthen my faith. Jere, jere van hulle niemand met my deur klop in die potse water, is al droege kook. Jere, maar ek ga nie na die men nie, man nie lende toe nie, die duivel is een leenare. Because I am depending on you vader, and I'm trusting her, that you will strengthen my faith. Say for your neighbor, neighbor, pray. That the Lord will strengthen your faith. We need stronger faith. If we're going to see miracles, uh, if we're going to see lives being transformed, uh, if we're going to see breakthrough, uh, if we're going to see systems come down, uh, if we're going to see strongholds come down, uh, it's going to come through strong faith. Uh, it's not going to come through the multitude. Uh, it's going to come via those who believe. Uh, it's not going to come through the crowds. Uh, it's going to come via those who believe. Uh, it's not going to come through people uh, that has the names and the labels uh, and the money uh, and the resources. Uh, no, I tell you, it's going to come by those who believe and if only you can get it right to believe against all odds it does not matter what the report is it does not matter where they write you off it does not matter who denies you it does not matter who declines you if only you believe if you can stand in the day of adversity if you can stand when everybody say that you don't deserve it that you don't qualify that you are not the right person but you continue believing because those who have faith will be able to stand in the last days. Say your neighbor and say, neighbor, if only you believe that he did hear a pray. Uh, 
uh, the amazing thing about Jesus, he says to Philip Evangelist, he says, if you believe, you will do the same words that I have done. In other words, he's telling Jesus, he's telling Philip now that you will have the ability to lean deeper into the kingdom. Your sight will change. When others see a decline, you see another opportunity. When others see a rejection, you see reason to believe. When others see that you have been denied, you see reason to start all over again. In fact, I do not lean on my own understanding I trust in the name of the Lord the Bible says some trust in chariots and others in horses but we YHC we will remember the name of the Lord we will call upon the name of the Lord because we know that we are saved in the shadow of his wings somebody say believe we got to learn to believe the next thing he says to Philip he says Philip not only will you be able to do the same things that I have done, but Philip, you will be able to go do greater things. Here I come, put here. I say, my mother, the child, got here. I say, my party, the resources, got here. My father, I was, I said, we for that, but he heard here my life, got done it. Don't this fair to her. It was not a lure for it, got done it. But I say, we for that family, that what God can do through you, what God can do for you, you don't need a connection, you only need faith. If only you can believe, you will be able to do greater things. Iman Khiri, your praise. He says, he says, he says, Philip, if you believe, you will be able to go further, Philip. <coughs> He says, Philip, if you believe, you will be able to do more. You will be able to reach more. You will be able to heal the sick. You will be able to raise the dead. You can arrest every wicked player and principality that rules over the area where you stay. You see, the reason why the devil is triumphing is because you don't believe enough. You don't have strong faith. That's why you make a young man to do what you play. That's why you young doctors to do what That's why you make a young doctor to do because you don't have faith uh, to step out by faith uh, and tell the devil uh, up until today and no more. Uh, I arrest you, uh, you principality. Uh, I bind you, uh, you strong man. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I strip you from your authority uh, and every dominion uh, that you have. Uh, if only you believe. You got to have strong faith. You got to have strong faith. Because strong faith will position you so that the devil will know about you. You see, there are some people that the devil will never taunt. No, the devil will never visit you. There are some people the devil will never visit you because the devil knows the level and the strength of your faith. And the devil does not want to mess with you because the devil knows you might send him to the pot of hell. You might bind him up uh, and he does not want to go there before the time. Uh, so he stays away from your house. Uh, he stays away from your neighborhood. Uh, he stays away from your children uh, because he's afraid of your faith. Uh, I see your skin color. I uh, see your ethnicity. Uh, I see your economical status. Uh, but it's your faith, sweetheart. Uh, you got to get your faith strong. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I know what I'm saying from you. I know what I'm saying from your family. Maybe the skin is a skin or the skin is a skin. And your family is maybe armer under the arms. But where am I for that? I can maybe know the material world. I can maybe know the connections. But baby, baby, baby. I have the glue of a mustard seed. And even if we have faith if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, then we'll be able to tell the tree to uproot itself and plant itself in the ocean. Somebody say believe. There are certain difficulties that the Lord will never give to people without faith. But there are certain struggles God gives to you because He knows you have faith. Ze gaan niet op een kinderbaantje eten, omdat het die maand moeilijk gaat. Aan hier. Omdat het niks meer eten. En zo wat de Lord doet, He sometimes throws something at you so that he can strengthen your faith a little bit more. 
And he only strengthens your faith for the assignment ahead of you. He does not strengthen your faith so that you can flaunt about it. So that this is a poke and like a footer and more fear. And he no, he strengthens your faith for the assignment that is ahead of you. Philip, I will let him glue because he very can screw it what for your layer. Silla must get red water. The farmers must not be here and come. The enemies must not be here and come. You are a competitor. The fact Philip, as the glue it Philip, you have to glue Philip so that you have to glue. Dat we kan doen als dat ik ga doen dat dat van de twintig vier en twintig vallen, maar ik heb kijk moet staan en waar en ja, roes en dat vallen, maar zo believe vallen. Dat we believe, dat we believe, dat we believe. I tell you today, beloved, if only you believe, you will be able to move mountains. You see, there has been restrictions that has been placed over your family. There's restrictions that has been placed over your region, and some of us are struggling. Not only to send the half blade, but your brew, what an ear strafy blade is right. But you look at the cell, he said. And so what you don't know is regional demons that has been assigned to certain regions to impose poverty upon people. And so blood sacrifices has been made and altars has been erected that the colored men are going to sleep how he. All are going to suffer. All must nurse and rack. Policemen and rock, and etc. and etc. And so what happens now? The colored people cannot break through poverty and unemployment, and they cannot break beyond gangsterism and drug addiction, and they cannot become doctors. And we see the Christians do not become doctors. Who feel Christian? Who feel colored doctors? Can he? Who feel Christian? Can he? So can he and it? As is a hundred with fat because the most of them is other religions, the other ethnicities. Why? And what we do not know is because regional demons and ethnicity demons and principalities has been erected to keep us where we are. We cannot come beyond that sphere, and we cannot excel beyond what we, what our parents did, and beyond what our peers have excelled in. And now we must manage the low level. Not to say that he work as low level, but I'm trying to show you something today that you can break that not through finances. No, you break it by faith. You step out by faith. You step out in boldness. For the stronger your faith, the more confidence you will have, because you cannot do it yourself. You cannot do it yourself. If you are thinking you'll make it on your own, you are lying to yourself. The devil is busy for you to live. You need the help of God, but you only get God into your business. By faith, because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. And so I come to my text today, beloved, where Jesus says to them, "If you love me, keep my commandments." He says, "If you love me, keep my commandments." The word "keep" there, the Greek word is "stereo," T E R E O, stereo. For you that's writing, and what stereo means, it means to attend carefully. It means to take care of, and it means to guard. And so, what Jesus is saying to his disciples, he says, "If you love me, guard my commandments." He says, "If you love me, take care of my commandments." He says, "If you love me, attend to it carefully." In other words, pay attention to detail. If you love me, keep my commandments. But we know that you do not guard something that ain't valuable. So why would Jesus tell his disciples to guard his commandments? Let's clarify this. In the book, in in the. And the reason I mentioned the three other gospels is because the commandment that we get in the three other gospels is different to the commandment in the book of John. In the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, we find commandments such as if they smack you on the one cheek, you give the other cheek. I forgot to remind you, my noch a talk. We find commandments in there that pay your taxes. We find commandments in the other gospels. That speaks about how we ought to walk before the governors of the world. But in the book of John, there is one commandment that Jesus continually highlights, and you will find the first thing, the first one you will find in John chapter thirteen, thirty-four, 
where he says to his disciples, a new commandment I give to you. I told you now in Mark, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, if someone asks you to walk one mile, you walk two miles. In the, in the other Gospels, I've told you now that if someone asks you something and you give it, I've given you all that. But disciples understand this. I'm giving you a new commandment now. I'm giving you a fresh commandment. And this is the commandment that you must guard. This is the commandment that you must watch over, that you must attend to. He says, a new commandment I give unto you that ye may love one another. It says in the same way that I have loved you. In John 15, 12, he says, this is my commandment. That ye may love one another as I has loved you. In verse 17, it says, these things I command ye that ye love one another. So it seems like John is assuming into the reality that Jesus is saying the thing that we must guard, Sister Tando, is our love for one another. Because what is valuable is the thing that we look after. And what the enemy knows, if he can destroy love amongst the brethren and the body of Christ at last, he destroys the impact the influence and the growth of the church. If there is no love amongst the brethren, there will be no expansion of the church. If there is no love amongst the brethren, it reduces the impact. He said to his disciples, by this the world will know that ye are my disciples, that you love one another. And so he says to them, this is what I want you to do evangelists. Whatever you do, God the love. Mark die liefde toe. Mark die saak wat gebeur nie. Mark die liefde toe. Jylle hoef jy altyd oor een te stem nie. Maar mark die liefde toe. Jylle hoef jy altyd handen te skit nie. Maar mark sieke dat die liefde nie geëkspose is nie. Because what the enemy is after, sister Ibro, is die liefde. What the devil wants to take out of the equation, is the love amongst you. What the devil wants to destroy within the church is the love. We can have a beautiful building. We can have all the sound. We can have everything that we desire. If we don't have love for one another, the streets of Delft will never change. It is the love that the streets are going to change. As you see all the streets, as you see how you are going to change, it is the love that when a young man will see, but the young man, the man and the high kick is love for each other. Dan gaat die jongman sê, maar daar is waar ek wil wees. Ja, ek word getig, maar ek sien as ek liefde uit man. Yes, I've been corrected, but I'm sensing the love within that man. So, 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 so what God, what Jesus is saying, the new command that I'm giving to you. He's saying that if you love me, you will love one another. At baat het, sy sê het, sy het van my liefde. I will know that you love me, sê Jesus. If you 12, you, 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 if you love one another, beyond our skin color, beyond our ethnicity, beyond what we own, where we stay, what we drive, what we have, and what he meet, as ek vir hy met die stik in die skoene en met die stik in die kleren net so lief kan het, dan maak het met die saak in. Dan then nobody will feel left behind. Nobody will feel as if they don't have a place in the kingdom. Because one of the first errors is always done, always bring geld to the Heere to, and the Heere will also geld here. But do you know there's seven currencies in the kingdom? And the seventh one is money. The last one is geld. One of the greatest currencies of the kingdom is love. Because the same book John will tell us, this is why Jesus sent his only begotten son. Because he loved us. Jesus says to Philip in conclusion. He says, Philip, if you believe in me, I will pray the Father. In fact, he says, does he have the most? He says, and whatever you ask the Father in my name. Not the Father, he says, I'll ek for you. Self. But then he tells them, if you love me, 
loves one another. Kan ons Korintiërs 19 kry asseblief, en dan aan die konkluzie. Korintiërs, 1 Korintiërs 13. 1 Korintiërs 13. 1 Korintiërs 13. He says, if you love me, you will guard the love. You will choose love over everything. Love over anything. Can we stand to our feet? Can we stand to our feet? I want you to take, get us warm, yeah, nurse, maybe a bit sweeter. But would you please take the hand your neighbor? I tell you the thing that is most threatened is love. The devil knows he will never have communion the way we have communion with him. Never. In fact, he has a legion of angels. He has angels that accompany them that God has thrown out of heaven with him. But he cannot even have communion with them. He will never have brotherly love again. In fact, he has no access back to heaven. That's a grace for Lucifer. And because there's no grace for Lucifer, he wants to bring us to a place where there's no grace for us. Where there's no grace for us. And as a result of that, he wants to contaminate the condition of our heart. And so he will erect things within our lives, attitudes, people, to steal the love out of our hearts for one another. And with the verdict, did you realize sometimes it is not even it is not even the devil? Sometimes we just look at our situations and the and we begin to feel that nobody cares. And just because I don't hear people pray, I feel nobody's praying for me. And that is all motivations from the devil to take the love out of us. But 1 Corinthians 13 says, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I make it net a keras. I am only a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. Next. And if I have the gift of prophecy and cannot fathom all mysteries, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. Next, Brumonde. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship and that I may that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it does it, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It does not, it, it, it is not self-seeking, sorry. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice in, with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there are knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away... I put the way of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So when everything is said and done, when the fat lady sings, when the whistle blows, God wants love. Yeah, in the last days, the just will live by faith, but God wants love. And so for a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask you to right where you are, 
Just to pray that the Lord will never allow the love to die out in your heart. That the Lord will give you the courage to guard the love above all. That the Lord will help you so that you might be able to stand, even if you stand for nothing, that you will stand for love. Al het die niks om te defend nie. Al het die niks om voor te beklui nie. Al het die niks om voor uit te sien vir die dag van morgen nie. I pray that the Lord will help you that you might love irrespective. You may progress in prayer. One minute.